a couple of months ago, we at the European Jewish Association learned about an auction of Nazi memorabilia in Munich. What we're talking about here are not items of historical significance, but trinkets like Hitler's cutlery set, Goering's wife's jewelry, and the like. We believe that the trade for profit of these items is disgusting and encourages those who seek to glorify in the despicable acts committed by the Nazis. Some of you here may have seen the news coverage that literally went worldwide when we called for the auction to be stopped. We were prepared for our next step, pushing legislation, as you have seen, to ban these auctions. But one thing we weren't prepared for was what happened next. He spent more than $660,000 of his own money to buy Adolf Hitler's personal belongings that had gone up for auction in a sale in Germany. November 2019, an auction house in Germany is selling the personal items of Nazi leaders, including Hitler. The European Jewish Association was outraged. The items could fall into the hands of neo-Nazi fanatics, or worse. What kind of people look to buy personal belongings of Adolf Hitler and others, if not because of those people are their inspiration? The auction house refused to stop the sale despite the public and media outcry. But Abdallah Shatila, a Lebanese Christian businessman, heard our call and bought much of the collection and gave it to Karen Ayasod in order to be kept at Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. He too didn't want it falling into the wrong hands. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please join me and welcome Mr. Abdallah Shatila to the stage. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. At this stage of the evening, I'd also like to invite up our chairman once again, Rabbi Menachem Margolin. We have the uh, privilege to present the King David Award, which is an award European Jewish Association have the privilege to hand over to pers personalities who made a real difference for the Jewish community. European King David Award presented to Mr. Abdallah Shetila, a righteous among the nations, from the European Jewish Association on the occasion of delegation to Auschwitz, 20th of January, 2020. Mr. Shetila, thank you so much. I feel like the president. I can't see half of it. Dear friends, Mr. Magorin, the Jewish Association today, you're honoring me with uh, an award that I feel I don't deserve. I don't deserve that award because I feel that what I did, everybody, in this room should have done and could have done the same, which means stepping up. Stepping up for the right thing to do. Stepping up for this hatred, for this anti-Semitism, for this rise of populism stops in Europe and stops in the world. The fact that I'm Lebanese and I, gave those, I bought those items and gave them to Israel was a big fuss, more of a big fuss because I was Lebanese than actually buying the items. I feel that the big fuss came from the fact that I openly stood up and I wasn't scared to show to the world 
that any one of us can make that difference. And this is where the fuss should come from. All of us here, all of us, we can do the same thing just by some time to time thinking that we can make the difference. Believing in our powers, believing in the fact that every human has the right to live, has one life only, and deserve to live it fully in his right of freedom of speech and freedom of having the religion and worship whoever he wants to worship. Life being single doesn't deserve to be thrown away like a garbage. What happened in the Holocaust, during the Holocaust, was, of course, the worst times ever that we can remember because it was registered. But please do remember that is not only about the Jews or about the Christians. It's about humanity, about tolerance. And today, I'm so honored to be here because I'll be witnessing what has happened, the worst times ever. And it's going to give me even more strength to go forward and try to do again what is the right thing. Today, one person out of five, between 18 and 30 years old, doesn't know what the Holocaust is. One-fifth of the young population never heard about the Holocaust. Excellencies, this is your job to repair this. We cannot go on like this, keeping everything in the dark. We have to keep on talking about what happened, not every day, every minute of our lives, because this should never happen on anyone's watch, and especially not ours. What Rabbi Margolin Association did, they keep on fighting every day. If he didn't fight, if he didn't scream loud enough, me, simple man, I wouldn't have heard his noise. I wouldn't have heard his voice. And by shouting and screaming, he found someone that listened to that voice. So if each one of us, we do the same thing, somebody else might hear us, and somebody else might do the same thing I did. Buying memorabilia, or pointing someone that has something, said something bad, anti-Semitic, or any other kind of racism. We should, not, we should have zero tolerance on racism. After, the, after I bought those events, after I bought those items and gave them to Yad Vashem, and I was honored to be invited in Israel to meet the president, and to, I went to the delegation, uh, Rabbi Margolin came with us, and I visited Yad Vashem. Again, it was an ex uh, unforgettable experience to see that we have the living proof of what happened. I have I, I have a foundation, I give a lot of donations to many other charities, among them Lebanese charity because I come from Lebanon. And a lot of the Lebanese charities after that event refused to get my money, saying that I was a traitor, saying that I helped the Jews, saying that because of my action, not that they were unhappy with what I did, is because a small part of the Lebanese Hezbollah had my head or thought that I was something evil or the enemy of the state or something like that. So a lot of people came to me and said, did you regret doing it because of the reaction of your own people? And I said, the only thing I regret is the ignorance of those people. The only thing I regret is the fact that none of them actually came and called me and asked me why I did it instead of just judging an action of just hearing something about someone. And today, again, we come back to education. Again, we come back to teaching the world that being tolerant is part of being humane. And we are all humans here. And this is the last thing I'm gonna say, is that we should behave like human beings, not like animals. Every single life counts. Every life is a single one, and that person deserves to live it fully. 
If we have the right to see our kids grow, everybody else has the right to see his kids grow. One of my friends died in the Brussels uh, attack. She was the mother of a very dear friend of mine. And this, this, daughter, this daughter, the daughter of this, I mean, this friend of mine, never ever was the same woman after her mom passed away. Not only because she passed away, because she was killed like a Jew, like she was, she already came from a family that had, uh, that came from the camps, and she was a survivor. She was a kid of a survivor, and again, like your grandmother, that thought that she was able to escape the hatred. In the, mu in the Jewish Museum in Brussels, in Europe, in the center of the world, in the face of everyone, she was killed among four others. And this is not possible. Not possible nowadays, not possible with all the information the world has. Nobody can deny that the information is out there. Just each one of you, please remember, spread the word. And like you said, every experience we share with somebody else, it becomes his experience. And I wish that what I've just done today is going to be your experience, and we'll share all of it. Thank you again for this prize. Thank you so much, Mr. Chatila. And that concludes this particular section. We're going to now move to our main course. Bon appétit, and I'll be back with you shortly afterwards. And uh, of course, if our staff can help you with anything in the meantime, you know where to find us. Bon appétit.